we're ready for the final match. $15,000 to the winner, Mark Roth and Marshall Holman. I think many of us, Nelson Burton Jr., thought this might be exactly how it would wind up. Well, it's, it's the match to see. And I'll tell you, Mark Roth got his uh, start in Kansas City at the King Louis Open a couple of years ago, shooting a 299. And I know he'd like to finish with a victory here and head back to where it all started. They have met twice uh, during this tournament, have they not? Well, they tied, tied the final round, uh, Vern, as you said, but Marshall Holman ran all over Roth in the earlier <laughs> matches, 254 to 195. Mark is still practicing on the right-hand lane. He has allowed six practice balls, being the tournament leader, having to wait almost an hour and 15 minutes since he last rolled a shot on the TV lanes. Marshall Holman will probably start the match. This is the first shot that really counts. Friends off the lanes, adverse enemies on the lanes. Matter of fact, one of the titles, uh, they, they teamed up together to win the uh, doubles championship. Well, they're not splitting the money today, pal. I don't think 15, so. 15,000 to the winner. Marshall Holman opens the championship match. He does so with a strike in the first round. A smooth, confident strike. He did not overpower, just stroke. I'll tell you, Mar Mark Roth, the man's making better than $100,000 every year. His key right here in this match is to win the match. Money is secondary to this man. He grabs hold of that ball like Dick Butkus. <laughs> and there she is. Say goodnight, kids. <laughs> Just the essence of power bowler, Mark Roth. And I remember, Bo, seeing that 299 he rolled at the King Louis Open. And this is the style he used to get it. Just the high backswing, the cocked wrist, wide open all the way through the backswing. Notice his thumbs po pointing almost directly out. Then a tremendous spin and turn, elbow locked. And that's what motivates the pins. Mark taking a little extra time. I'll tell you what, he usually bowls very quickly, but against Marshall Holman, he's going to use all he can get. I talked to Mark. I know both these players very well, and Mark would just like to beat Marshall. He's just getting a little tired of Marshall taking home the money. How much of a possible psych job do these two guys do on each other? Well, they're going to work each other right now. Well, that's a good way to start. <laughs> Mark walking with a determined look. He's putting, uh, putting it together. Marshall Holman will, will just try to answer the bell. We've got a dream championship. Two of the outstanding young professional bowlers, two of the stars of the tour. Marshall Holman, and look how far back he starts, Bo. The full distance of the approach, more than 16 feet. There, oops. Almost got a break with the pin rolling down. The old iron jaws got him. But once again, it's a week 10, and even Marshall Holman's ball cannot drive it out completely. The action to watch is the right side. Watch the six pin just lay down on the side and did not quite drive in the 10. That is not a solid tap. Marks in the second for Marshall Holman. That's the spare. And now we'll move over to the left lane, 39, here at the Form Lanes in Grand Prairie. By the way, Phil Petrilia, the advertising manager of Quaker State Oil sitting just beyond Marshall Holman. And there's a look at the, uh, take a look at his thumb. Mark Roth with Mark the Roth. sore thumb, rosin bag, and glove. He's got all the material going for him, plus the powerful ball. He doesn't want to watch Holman. You don't mind me saying that's an ugly thumb, do you? <laughs> I think a lot of the bowlers have one of those. <laughs> Marshall Holman. That's a 10 again. Week 10, didn't catch at all, but Marshall stroking the ball very well. Marshall Holman cross lane. Now watch the extreme speed he uses. When he has a, a big hook like Holman, you have to go with a lot of speed to hold it down using extreme left side of the approach, cross lane. So for the second consecutive frame, a spare from Marshall Holman. Mark Roth with an 11 pin lead, working on a triple, going for his third consecutive strike here in the championship match with $15,000 going to the winner. Weekly average, 225.8. He has led wire to wire. At one time, had a 420-pin lead. And now, left the 10-pin himself. Mark knew he threw that ball as well as he possibly can. Started to run it out a little bit. Whack, solid 10. You want to see the position of Mark Roth as he comes through the shot. There is Mark Roth. Notice the thumb pointing all the way out. It puts it in a tremendous angle of spin. Now, Marshall Holman... On the other hand, is straight up and down with his thumb. He does not spin it quite as much as Mark Roth, but he gets more lift through the ball. Spare in the third for Mark Roth, still holding on to a 10-pin lead over Marshall Holman, 26 years old from Staten Island, New York. Nickname is Smock. And already has put together.
altogether 15,905. This year, he could double that with a win in this match. He's got the strike in the third, in the fourth. We'll be returned with more final round action between Marshall Holman and Mark Roth in just a moment. Next week, Dick Weber defends his title in the $75,000 King Louie Open from Overland Park, Kansas. Be sure to join us next Saturday for Stop 5 along the Pro Bowlers Tour at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 Central, and 4 o'clock Pacific over most of these ABC stations. Meanwhile, we are back live with part of the great crowd here at the Forum Lanes in Grand Prairie, the final match of the second annual Quaker State Open. Marshall Holman working on a spare up in the fourth. And finding the strike. Once again, we can see the release positions of Marshall Holman and Mark Roth. This is Marshall Holman. Notice how his thumb is at almost 12 o'clock, and he lifts up straight through the ball almost with a tremendous wrist and finger lift. Mark Roth is wide open, and he spins the ball more. He actually goes through it like a bullwhip. This is his pan position at the top of the swing as he's coming down through. In the fifth frame, going for the double, not getting it. Left the sixth pin. Just kind of babied the ball. Mark, uh, Marshall Holman has to keep the speed, as does Mark Roth. They so, throw such big hooks on the back end of the lane that if they baby the ball or throw it a little too slow, it's going to snap right through. Marshall Holman is not energizing or speeding that ball up like he normally does. Gets a six out for a spare in the fifth frame and continues to trail Mark Roth. Mark going for his fourth strike in the fifth frame. He opened with a double, then spared, came back with a strike, so he's a strike up in the fifth. Can open a 20-pin lead. And just a really unique bowling style. Once again, the solid, solid 10. He could just have just about have Marshall Holman knocked out of this match. The 10-pin has stopped him. And I'll tell you, Roth is really trying so extra hard this week, Vern. Holman has been kidding him quite a bit since their duel in the Brunswick World Championship where Holman defeated him 279 to 250 was the final score. And Marshall does sometimes doesn't let a sleeping dog lie. And Mark Roth is out to get him. Well, Mark Roth certainly has the look of a man who's determined, and he spares in the fifth. Now goes to the left lane, lane 39. Powerful six-footer. When you have talent of this caliber, a lot depends on the condition of the lane, who favors what. I say that Mark Roth, with his little more speed and a little more spin than Holman, has the advantage, especially on the left-hand lane. And that's where he is right now. Yes. Yeah. Strike in the six for Mark Roth, and he takes the 10-pin lead once again. It's amazing the carry power and the reaction of some of these players, especially like Mark. They can hit that light hit and just scramble them all up. Mr. Quentin Wood of Quaker State just beyond. Mark Roth, wire to wire leader here in the uh, Quaker State. And here's Mark. Got the 10 pin kick out that time. And comes back with a strike in the sixth frame. We can watch the match as this. Marshall Holman has what I consider the best shot on the right-hand lane. He's a little slower, a little more roll. That's on the right-hand lane, the tighter lane. On the left-hand lane, Roth has the better shot, a little more speed, a little more spin. So the job is Holman to hit the left lane, Roth to strike on the right lane to keep the match as even as it is. Right now, Holman, trailing by 10, can make it all even with a strike in the seventh. And he got the strike in the seventh, and boy, he is some kind of happy. Pressure ball from Marshall Holman. The crowd is almost stunned here by the competition. You can feel the electricity going through it. They don't even know how to react with these two power players out there. They're just expecting someone to break loose. Marshall Holman has put, put it on Mark Roth. Mark Roth in the seventh. Right-hand lane. Yeah. Once again, the 10 pin, that little extra spin, such as Mike Berlin, could not carry it. Watch the six pin just lay down in the channel, not driving through quite hard enough with that spin on the ball. On the left-hand lane where the ball finishes a little more, Mark would have carried that hit. Now, Bo, that's not a characteristic of the house. It's simply the ball, right? Well, every lane has characteristics. On this particular pair, the right-hand lane does not break as sharply as, as the left-hand lane. I'd say the right-hand lane is one of the tighter lanes in this house out of the... 60 odd lanes they have here. The right hand lane is very tight and it does not favor Mark Ross' game. 
Mark should hit this left hand almost automatically, the left hand lane. Working on the spare. The match is all even, eighth frame. to uh, Marshall Holman as we look at the footwork of Mark Roth. The unique footwork of Mark Roth. Six steps. The only other player I've ever seen do that is Dick Weber back when he was in his 20s and 30s to generate a little extra speed. Went with six steps. Look at that beautiful release and turn. Sensational. By the way, you told me our statistician was quick, Palmer Fogren, and you were right. <laughs> <laughs> Key shot for Marshall Holman. Did he find it? No. The same shot that has plagued Roth. The solid 10. Marshall Holman with almost ideal style, low profile. Watch how the swing stays right next to his body, his arm close to his body as he lifts straight through the ball. Converting the tempo. Now it comes down to who wants to win the most. Right now, Marshall Holman is trailing by one pin, coming up in the key ninth frame. You say you wanted this close, Nelson? <laughs> I knew it. These two players, they never get away from each other too far. And uh, Marshall Holman's goal is to be bowler of the year. If he wants to be bowler of the year, I think he's going to have to beat this man very consistently. Mark Roth. Ninth frame. Left lane. Uh-oh. Got it high. Once again, the lane that I said favored Roth is Hurt Holman. He needs extra speed on the left-hand lane. He's not using it. So he has really dug himself a ditch right now. If he could convert this 6-10, he has a possible 2-16. Roth can come up to ninth and 10th and just shut him out completely. Now you saw the graphic where Marshall Holman has made it mark twice on national television. He gets the spare in the ninth by covering the 610. Mark Roth right now knows the situation on this key ninth frame. He is leading by three, but he has a strike up. He can put the knockout blow right on Marshall Holman with a strike here. Just a hint of reaction from Marshall Holman. It's not over yet, though. Here is the situation. Mark Roth with a strike on this first ball in the 10th will shut out Marshall Holman. Mark Roth has a possible 239, but he needs at least eight spare strike fill in the 10th for a 217. The best Holman can shoot is 216. Up by 13 in the 10th. <laughs> Mark Roth keeping in a play, leaves the half 10 through it a little hard. Here's the situation. Mark Roth's spare strike would have 218. West Marshall Holman can shoot is 216. So Mark needs this spare and nine on the next ball to lock up the tournament. Needs this spare. Well, he's got the spare bow. Now he needs nine pins for his next ball to lock it up. And there's Marshall Holman. Roth with a nine pin counter strike is the Quaker State Open champion. If he gets eight, seven, six, or less, we have all sorts of possibilities. We could have a tie. Holman could still win. Roth, nine or a strike, is the new champion. Two, get it. 16. Marshall Holman can throw three strikes to tie and will go into sudden death. Roth has finished with a 216. Holman can win and can tie this match and will go into sudden death two frame roll off. And you think Marshall Holman doesn't know that? You he think knows he's the not situation. thinking about that, Bo? The last time he was in this position was in the Ford Open against Jimmy Certain. He threw a clutch strike in the ninth and tenth to win the tournament. He now needs three to tie. The minute he doesn't strike, it is all over. Tell you what, and he did not baby it. You could say goodbye to that five pin. He just dissected that rack, ripped the five right into the seven. Now he needs two more to tie. We would go into a sudden death, two frame roll off. Two of the outstanding young bowlers on the PBA tour, and they are thrilling. All of you, we trust this afternoon. Mark Roth watching on as Marshall Holman tries to strike out. He must have the strike. And he got it. One more strike by Mark uh, by Marshall Holman. We have a tie. 
and we'll go into a two-frame roll-off. Frank Esposito calling for quiet as you look at the replay of the reaction of Marshall Hoban. This crowd murmuring, they know what's going on here. It's all on this ball. Mark Roth wins the Quaker State Open Championship by three pins over that man, Marshall Holman. What a tremendous finish. <laughs>